most likely come out victorious. Um, and then he said effort, um, controlling your effort and intensity, um, not letting the emotions get out of control, um, but harnessing those emotions and, uh, and putting them towards uh, a positive effort and, and, and a positive experience for this team and, and not to get too emotional right here and make a, uh, you know, unforced errors early in this game. Um, and then on the other side of the ball with the Hoya Country Day, um, Coach Meyer's main point or a key was to play disciplined defense. Um, defense wins championships. Coincidentally, we're in a championship game right here. Um, points puts butts in the seats, and uh, defense wins rings. So coach wants to see his team come out here and play tough, physical style defense, um, and put the pressure on Parker, um, and see if they can stop Dunklin. Um, or I mean, if Dunklin can get off uh, for El La Jolla Country Day, uh, I mean, for Parker, that if they can stop Dunklin, then uh, they'll be in good position. So, should have an exciting matchup right here. Um, should go down on the wire. Both teams beat each other once in the regular season. Um, so, I I expect a hard-fought battle right here. You can definitely tell the size off the off the bat. The Country Day has that advantage as Frank Bamford will do the jumping and controls the tip for the Tories, and we are underway here in the boys' Division Four title game. Parker settles into their man defense and right away. Nice play coming out of the get-go and Bamford lays it up and in. Two nothing country day on top, just underway here in the first quarter. Dunklin, top over to Fitzner. Air ball on Bryce Fitzner's first attempt. Fitzner was wide open in the corner right there. Great ball movement by Parker finding the wide open man and the defense just didn't rotate proper to fill away a country day. Bamford doesn't hesitate, fires a three. That one won't go. The rebound comes down to Parker and Parker throws it away. So country day will reset after coming up with a the turnover there. Kai Tuitz has the ball. Swings over to the left. Driving in, tough shot, won't go from Sage Burmeister. And fight for the loose ball comes down to Parker. Dunklin has it. Dunklin, the point guard for Parker, bringing the ball forward. Swings it over. Now over to Bryce Fitzner. And Bryce Fitzner throws it away. And Bamford comes up with a loose ball, and a foul is going to be called. It looks like that's going against Evan Fitzner, which will be foul number one. And the first team foul will allow Country Day to inbound from the side. So Parker not getting off to uh, the start. We're just underway here, 6.30 left in the first quarter. We're getting off to kind of a rough first start offensively the first minute and a half. Bamford drives in, misses the layup. Fight for the rebound comes down to Parker, and Parker will look to push forward. Yeah, had a wide open layup right there and just clanked it off the, bat, off the glass. Can't miss those opportunities right here in a championship game. Got to put those up and put that in the basket. Um, looks like we got it injured. A Coleman Night Baker. Yeah, it looks like that's a Coleman Baker. He was the one initially missed the initial shot. And then there was a fight for the rebound, and he went down, and he's being attended to right now by his teammates. And now the coaching staff will come out and, and take a look at him. He's grabbing his side. Hopefully he's okay. Coleman Baker, the junior. Hopefully just got the, maybe the wind knocked out of him a little bit or something. Starting a junior, he's six foot four, and definitely need his size. Looks like he's going to be all right. Yeah, Helped like up, and he's on his own power, and he's going to be just fine. Yeah, looks like he just took an elbow to the gut, got a little wind knocked out of him. Needed a second to gather his, gather himself, and he'll stay in the game. Tough kid. And so Parker will inbound from underneath. Delonte Dunklin, the point guard, will be underneath the basket. And if you folks at home watching, if you watch a little bit of college basketball, you might notice that uh, Parker, uh, Francis Parker runs sort of like a control motion Princeton style of offense. Um, so you'll see a lot of ball movement right there, a lot of motion sets um, and try to find an open man. Ball movement is crucial in this, in this offense right here. Delonte Ooh, Dunklin is hit. A lot hit. of contact right there. Yeah, there was a lot of contact. And Coach Myers like, wait a minute, there, there has to be some kind of foul call, but they let him play. And Dunklin will reset. Dunklin gets in the paint, puts up a tough shot, misses everything, hits the side of the backboard. And looking to push now as Country Day, Burmeister has it on the wing. 
Up top of the two hits. Nice crossover. Now back to Burmeister. Swings out. Schlossberg and the loose ball comes out to Parker. So 5.40 left here in the first quarter. A low scoring uh, start. 2 0. Country Day has the lead. Yeah, wild shot by Schlossberger right there. You got to just. Well, Hood Country Day needs to take, settle down a little bit right now. Looks like they're letting their emotions get the best of them. And uh, right now, coming out a little bit too fired up. They need to just settle down, take a deep breath. It's a 2 0 game right now with 5.31 to go in the first period. Um, just get on the board. And Dunklin called for a travel. Looks like he may have got knocked down, but uh, they whistle him for a travel. And the ball goes back to the Tories. Over now. Schlossberg fires. Three, won't go. The rebound comes down to Jenkins. Yeah, and he was wide open from the wing. Nice shot, just a little bit too, too strong on that. Three-point shot up and no good from Evan Fitzner. And the rebound comes down to... Country Day, so Parker, we're three minutes in here, five minutes to go in the first, and they have yet to get on the board. Yeah, both teams are just coming out, playing a little nervous, shooting the ball really quick in the shot clock and just running up and down. This is a high-paced high, high -paced game right now, and both teams just need to take a deep breath and settle down a little bit, get into their offense. Um, it's a championship game, though, so the emotions running high, and I, I can totally understand where these kids are coming from right now, and uh, they both know each other really well, so... Um, this could come down to the last possession today. Another missed shot down low from Bryce Fitzner. 4-27 here in the first quarter. 2-0 Country Day leads. The only bucket coming on the opening play from Frank Bamford. Country Day looking for something. Burmeister, and we should have a foul call, and it is going against Country Day. That will be team foul number two, and they're going to call that on Delonte Dunklin. That's his first personal and the second on the team. So Country Day will inbound again from underneath. That's going to be Kai Tuitz who's going to inbound. Gets it over to... Oh, someone got... Uh, looks like it was going to be like a whole offense. No, it looks like offensive foul, legal screen. They call a technical on somebody. Someone got teed up. And it looks like it's, yeah, it looks like they're calling a technical on uh, well, Tuitz for La Jolla Country yeah, Day. Yeah, it's on Country Day. Tuitz is uh, called for the tee. So it's going to be two shots for Parker, and then they'll get the ball too. So it's a big-time foul right there. Connor Polk at the line trying to get Parker on the board, and he can't do so. Misses the first free throw. 5'11", junior guard. Try and hit the second one and does. The second one is good. So Parker gets on the board. Two to one, four eleven left. And that's going to be a change of possession after the technical. So it goes back to Parker. Unlike in the NBA, when you get a technical foul, you get two shots and then you keep the ball. Um, so these fa technical fouls in high school and college are, are big time fouls right here and can totally change the momentum of the game quickly. Evan Fitzner gets it over to Dunklin. Dunklin drives in. There's contacts. And they're going to... There's a foul on the pass. So. Yeah, he wasn't shooting. And they're going to call that on, I believe that's going against Four to five. Frank Bamford. That's going to be his first and the team foul, first team foul for the Tories. Driving in for Country Day was Bryce Fitzner out to Dunklin. Dunklin on the left wing. Swings it across to Jenkins. Jenkins drives in out top over to Evan Fitzner. And Fitzner steps on the end line going back to Country Day. So another turnover. Parker still looking for their first field goal. 3.43 left here in the first 2-1 Country Day leads. It looks like Country Day's and uh, Parker's baseball teams are out on the field here. Yeah, La Jolla Country Day is playing good defense right here. They're getting over on the top on the ball screens. They're not going underneath their man, so they're getting the hands in the face, and they're playing great, making tough shots, and a great yeah. drive. Burmeister. Burmeister, only a junior. He'll be back next year, one of the better point guards in Division Four, and it shows why they're nice attack to the basket and scores it. 4-1, Country Day on top. Yeah, and talk to, talking to Coach Meyer, he's probably their best player, and he averages about 16.1 points a game, so definitely needs to get him to get, get off for them to get the victory today. Yeah, turnover there from... The freshman, Khalil Jenkins, gives it back to Country Day, but we have a timeout on the court, media timeout. 4-1 is your score with 3-12 left in the first quarter here on CIF San Diego.tv. 
You can watch highlights or a replay of today's game in our on-demand section. You can also buy a DVD or Blu-ray of today's game right on CIFCNDO.TV. Click on Buy DVD and you can order today's game right now. How a game that lost a life team brought to you by CIFCNDO.TV. Looking for a great place to advertise for your business while reaching the greater high school community? Then you want to advertise on CIFCNDO.TV. We have great rates for your business while giving you the opportunity to get your message out to a very important demographic. For more information, give us a call at 619-677-3246. You want to have a game that, uh, you, excuse me. You want to have your bro game broadcast live on the internet and be able to watch it again and again on demand while making money for your sports program. Want to give your students the opportunity to create their own broadcast for your school's athletic events? Then contact us at info. That's I N F O at kbcsports.com. We offer season packages for schools, a full curriculum for your students, and the opportunity to raise up to ten thousand dollars for your sports program. Again, that's info at kbcsports.com or call us at six one nine six seven seven three two four six. About to resume play after this media timeout. 4-1 your score. Country Day on top. That's a high scoring first quarter, <laughs> Andrew. To say the least. Burning the nets right now. 4-1 with 312 to go. Been a defensive battle so far, folks. Tewitt's bringing the ball up here for the Tories across this half court. Parker in their man-to-man -man defense, not rotating at all, playing man straight up. Over to Bamford. Nice little ball screen right there. Get Burmeister. Burmeister. Should be a travel. It is a travel. Goes back to Parker. Yeah, and Frank Bamford had a nice little ball screen right there, but nice job on the Parker defense rotating right there, coming off that ball screen and, and making a tough shot for Burmeister and led to that travel right there and a turnover. High post right now for Parker. Dunklin gets it over to Coleman Baker. Baker off the glass and scores it for the first field goal for Parker. And they trail only by one, 4-3, two and a half to go here in the first quarter. And that was just a good job on, on Baker's getting the ball down low in great position, turning around and just banked it off the glass and a nice two points right there for Parker and one point game now. Burmeister fires a three from the left side, air ball. And the rebound comes down to Parker. Dunklin going to push. Dunklin behind the back, swings it out. Three-point shot is up from Evan Fitzer. Got it. That was deep, boys and girls. That was a NBA style, about 25 feet out there, about five feet behind the college three-point line. 6'4", nice Parker on top. After a slow start, they have knocked their last two field goals down. Burmeister drives in. Nice move. Can't finish. And the rebound comes down to Parker. Yeah, it looks like Burmeister is just pressing a little bit right now, trying to get himself off right now, and uh, Parker's doing a great job on defense. Right Dunklin now. hits a tough mid-range jump shot for his first points of the ball game in the lead up to four. 8-4, 130 left in the first quarter. Yeah, great individual effort by Delonte Dunklin right there, just taking the ball off the screen by himself and a little fadeaway jumper and nothing but the bottom of the net. Bamford drives in and misses the layup. Rebound comes down to Bryce Fitzner over to Dunklin. Dunklin's going to push. Dunklin spins around, creates contact. Shot won't go, but Dunklin will head to the line to shoot two. Yeah, wild shot right there. Driving the ball, spin move, fade away. Jumper, air ball, but got the foul, and we'll go to the line for two shots right here. And Delonte Dunklin, the senior, heading to UC Santa Barbara, going to be a gaucho next year. Run point for... Seattle. A solid Santa Barbara program. Yeah, San Diego State Aztecs will be seeing them in a couple years yep. when they move to the Big West. Banks in a free throw. I don't know if he meant to do that, but he'll take it. So Dunklin with three points. And after Country Day had the 4-1 lead, Parker's gone on a 9-0 run. Make that a yeah, 9-0 run as uh, Dunklin misses the second free throw. And to it, so we'll bring the, the ball forward. Down low. And that's the big man that they're going to have a hard time stopping. Top football recruit out of Arizona and doubles in basketball, and he is a low down low. 6'8 sophomore in Jordan Poland, and uh, he is a beast to say the least. <laughs> that's putting it nicely. He is just. I, I don't know what you can do down there. He's like a baby shack. 
He's only going to get bigger, too, which is a scary thought. Fires a three as Evan Fitzner, and he hits his second three of the quarter. And the lead is balloon to 12 to 6. Country Day can hold on to the final shot here if they elect to do so. Yeah, and they just need to work that low post right now where they got a distinct advantage down there with a big 3 2. Rooster gets in. The ball is swatted away. Bryce Fitzner, a clean block with 5.4. They're going to add a little bit of time here. It should be about six something as the referee is over talking with the scores table. But the ball went out of bounds and the clock kept rolling. So it should be six point something. Inbound from the baseline. These are some of the finest officials San Diego has uh, to offer. We've seen these officials numerous times over uh, the years in, in big games. And they reset it to 7.2, so they add a little bit more. But it is definitely the right call because the clock was rolling when the ball was out of bounds. And in a championship game, every second counts. And this is a great job by the officials to stop the game and make the right call, get everything set. Uh, don't want any mistakes happening up in a championship game of this magnitude. 12 to 6. Parker leads as the clock is still uh, trying to get situated here. On a Saturday afternoon of March Madness, the first Saturday in March. Favorite time of year is basketball tournaments are in full swing, conference tournaments, the NCAA tournament, high school tournaments. Fun times. Tough shot and won't go, and the rebound comes down, and that will do it for quarter number one. 12-6 is your score. Parker has the lead over Country Day here on CIF, San Diego.tv. KBCSports.com and the Play On Sports Network showcases great high school games every week, and now you can access our content using multiple platforms. Follow us on Facebook, get the latest KBC and Play On News on Twitter, or catch our highlights and high definition on YouTube. All of our content can now link to your favorite social media site. Share all the high school action you see every week. Brought to you by your home for high school sports, kbcsports.com and Play On Sports. Need a highlight video for your athlete working during that four-year scholarship? Then you want to contact kbcsports.com. We can provide recruiting video for any athlete in any sport. Not only that, but we can give you your own recruiting page right on our website. No more mailing DVDs to colleges. Instead, email coaches a link to your personal page. For more information, including pricing, contact us at recruits at kbcsports.com or contact us at 619-677-3246. Catch the best of San Diego section basketball on CFSanDiego.tv. You can watch replay of today's games after each one concludes, plus check out the game highlights, player of the game interviews, and more, or order a DVD or Blu-ray disc of the game. We're at your home for basketball on San Diego, CFSanDiego.tv. Today's broadcast is also brought to you by the San Diego Hall of Champions. The Hall of Champions, located in beautiful Balboa Park, is the nation's largest multi-sport museum with three levels of memorabilia and 68,000 square feet of space. It's also a great place to host your next big event. For more information, visit the Hall of Champions online at sdhoc.com. So it's been an entertaining ball game thus far. Yep, Evan Fitzner for Francis Parker on fire from three-point range and two for two and quick six points that helped that spark that 9-0 run by Francis Parker. 12-6 well, lead with start the second quarter. And everybody on this team except for Dunklin is an underclassman, or excuse me, two um, Dunklin and Mitch Brewerman, Bremerman are underclassmen, or seniors, everybody else is underclassmen. So this Parker team is going to be, you know, solid next year. We, you talked about Fitzner, he's only a sophomore. So he has a couple more years to get bigger and better. And yeah, and he's got a great stroke. And he's a tall, tall kid, lanky. Um, looks like you could even put him down in the low post, too. Um, but he's got a beautiful stroke, and his office has got the ability to shoot the ball. Dunklin being guarded heavily by Tewitz. Bryce Fitzner, and we have a hold, and it's away from the ball, and an inbound from underneath. Yeah, again, my, this is the first time I've gotten to see Delonte Dunklin play right now, and this kid does look like a big-time athlete. He looks real comfortable in traffic, real comfortable handling the ball, and makes great passes right there. You see Fitzner hitting his third three in a row, and that's nine points on three-pointers. 
Great job by Fitzner, a great pass by Delonte Dunklin. Seven and a half to go here in the first half, 15 to six, Parker on top. After they struggled to get on the board, they have really uh, excelled once they got that first bucket. And, and Park, yeah, yeah, they have definitely taken off and they're gonna have to give Fitzner another shot at three, a heat check coming down this next time down the court because he is just absolutely on fire and can't miss right now. Coleman Baker called for the foul and that will send Frank Bamford to the line. First free throw is up and good. Fitzner has nine points for Parker and the rest of the Parker team has a combined six points. So Fitzner's outscoring his team all by himself right now, just shooting lights out. And Bamford knocks down the second. 15 to eight, Parker has the lead. Nice oh, give nice. and go. Oh! oh! Delonte Dunklin with the jam, one-handed slam, posterizing La Jolla Country Day. Nice job, it was yeah. a beautiful feed. <laughs> I thought there was no chance in this world he was gonna throw that down. And that's why Delonte Duncan is going to UC Santa Barbara. That boy just got up and over the La Jolla Country Day defender and threw it down one-handed. Big time play and that will definitely be a play of the game. Catch that on the replays tonight, folks. Big time Tomahawk jam. And it's not like Dunklin is a big guy. He's six foot one. I mean, a big guy as far as height goes. Yeah, and he, no. he just threw that over two people. I thought there was no chance in the world he was going to dunk that. I thought he was going to go up and lay it in. I don't know how he didn't get an and one on that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's going on the highlights, folks. I can guarantee you that. In fact, that may be the highlight of the week in the entire state. Yeah, There's a big shot there from Bamford. Yeah, Bamford uh -huh. averages 11.4 points a game, the senior, and that's a big three to – to cut back into this lead, get it to a six-point game. And that was a huge basket after that monster dunk by Delonte Dunklin and Francis Parker. And Fitzner from three again. Misses. That's his first miss of the game. Just a little bit short right there. But big shot there going back to Bamford's three. After Dunklin with that huge dunk and all the crowd momentum, everything's going towards Parker. Bamford's able to silent him with that big three. Yeah, Andrew, so yeah big. you're exactly right. And that was huge right there. You know, they had all the momentum. The crowd was getting into it. And then come down and nail that three. I'm going to cut back into the lead. That was a huge basket to come back down and to answer right away. And that's what you look for in a team and a, and a good big-time player in a program, to answer those big scores. Yeah, exactly, to kind of quiet the quiet crowd and stop the momentum. And Bamford definitely did that. Nice pass by Bamford now. And the finish down low by Tuitt. So Bamford is kind of uh, waking up here, waking a sleeping giant. Yeah, that was a nice give and go from the high post position. He grabbed the ball and let the sl uh, slip down to the low post and give and go and wide open bucket, two points, and we got all of a sudden look up about a 17-13 game. Polk throws the ball away, so just like that, Country Day is able to sustain the, you know, some momentum here after that big dunk, and now they've clawed back in at 17-13, and they have the basketball. Yeah, a good sized crowd out here, folks. Two got. About half full of JCP, the Jenny Craig Pavilion. It's getting loud, it's getting rowdy. Got a good game on our hands right here. And I think it's gonna come down to the last possession of the game, possibly, Andrew. And definitely some talent on here, on, on the court here. Burmeister drives in, hangs in the air, floats it in. Nice individual effort right there. Burmeister taking the ball from the top of the key, getting a nice little screen off that ball screen and wide open in the lane and two points. Good job by the youngster. 17-15 is the score. Parker clinging on to a two-point lead, and Country Day has fired back. Dunklin up top. Back to Dunklin now. He gets off the ball screen. Fade, fade away, away from about the free throw line and drills it. That's a big time shot by a big time player. Off ball screen, uh, ball screen screen, fade away jumper at the top of the key. Big time shot by Delonte Dunklin. Well, um, let me tell you, the people up in Santa Barbara are gonna love watching him uh, when he heads up there next year. This guy brings excitement to the arena and can handle the basketball and a great leader. Tuitz has the ball knocked away. Parker has the ball now going the opposite way. 19, 15, 425 left in the half. Coach Tommy wants to slow it down a little bit right here, calling out a set for Delonte Duncan to run. Let's see, ball screen right here. Jump shot from about the free throw line, spins out. Wow. 
in and out, no one underneath the basket, the rebound, an easy rebound for Burmeister and the Hawaii Country Day and as he brings the ball up the court. Burmeister, nice crossover, gets in the paint and almost throws the ball away, but it's saved and now a three point is fired up from Brewster, that won't go. And the rebound comes down to Parker. Yeah, and I saved by Brewster right there, but then forcing the three point shot right there. It's up top. Bryce Fitzner, his three was halfway in and rolled out. And Bamford with the rebounds with 337 left. Parker up by four. It's a big possession right here for La Jolla Country Day. Get it within a two point game if they can get down right. Oh. Dunklin with the steal. And that could have been a clear pathfall there by Bamford. As he was about to drive past him, and Bamford clearly reached out to grab him. Yeah, Bamford picks up his second foul. Um, second, second leading scorer for, for La Jolla Country Day. You don't want to get your leading scorers into foul trouble this early in the game. So that's second on Bamford, and we have a media timeout with 3.25 left in the first half. Parker up by four, 19-15 here on CIF San Diego TV. Today's broadcast is brought to you by the San Diego Hall of Champions. The Champion Hall of Champions is located in beautiful Balboa Park, the nation's largest sport. Multi-sport museum with three levels of memorabilia and 68,000 square feet of, feet of space. It's also a great place to host your next big event. For more information, visit the Hall of Champions online at sdhoc.com. Today, today's game is brought to you by Susan Cooper Photography, the official photographer for the CIF San Diego section. Susan Cooper Photography provides quality team and action photos and can also provide trophies along with fundraising options all in one great package. To have them come out to your event, contact Susan Cooper Photography at 619-501. 7128 or visit them online at susancooperphotography.com. KBCSports.com will be providing live audio coverage for the state regional basketball championships as well as the finals. March Madness comes to high school basketball in California on March 17th for the regional basketball championships. Four venues of coverage around the state. Then the following weekend, March 23rd and 24th, it's the California State Basketball Championships. You can catch it all on KBCSports.com for your home for high school sports. I'm Andrew Jensen alongside James Bergenon. Booster today is Megan Coffey and our videographer Miles Sweet here at Jenny Craig Pavilion on the campus of the University of San Diego. Beautiful campus and a beautiful day today to come out and watch some basketball. And oh, yeah. uh, you know, it's a beautiful day outside, but it's the one day that I don't mind being inside all day long to yeah. watch uh, some nice basketball games going on. Wouldn't want to be anywhere else on my Saturday. Championship games all day long. This is going to be a great day of basketball. Um, you have got a little bit of Great college basketball on later on today too. Um, March Madness, like you said, is beginning, Andrew, and it's this is the best time of the month, best time of the year. Uh, March is a great month, a lot of excitement, and we're seeing some right here, a four-point game right now with three to go in the second half, first half. Ball is inbounded, and we're underway here after the media timeout. Dunklin has the ball. Parker up by four, 3:15 left in the in the half. Will rotate right there. Dunklin swings it down, and we have oh, a travel shot, on Evan Fitzner. Nice job on defense, Loyola and Country Day right there, switching on that, switching off their man right there. And uh, that's what you can do when you have an athletic team, a team that can play multiple positions. You have the ability to switch on your defenders and pick up anyone, and that enhances your ability to play defense right there. And a good job by Loyola Country Day right there. Kai Tuitz crosses over. Now I'll throw it back out to Burmeister. Meister trying to find post player. Now we'll give it up. Shot is missed. Dunklin is going to push forward. Dunklin bowls forward, creates some contact, and he's whistled for a travel, giving it back to Country Day. Yeah, he took, looked like he took three or four steps right there. Just a little bit of a travel. Good call by the official. And uh, Dunklin trying to go coast to coast, but one too many steps. 2.32 left in the half, still a four-point advantage for Parker. Burmeister using a screen, gets in the paint, has a shot blocked away, and again it's Dunklin, and again Dunklin is a foul before he can get to the basket. And again, probably a smart foul. Yeah, if not, yeah, definitely <laughs> another good highlight foul. reel. Not, yeah, if not, that would have been another highlight reel dunk or and one attempt right there. Dunklin just too quick and too fast for, for the Hoya Country yeah. Day defense and uh a lot of times you see these fouls are coming from behind just to so, stop. Them. So it's going to be a one and one here for Dunklin after uh, seven team fouls against the Tories. We'll see if Parker can extend the lead here with Dunklin at the line, and he gets the ball stuck. 
It's not very often you see that happen on a free throw. Attempt. Normally you see it uh, more on, on three point. When you do yeah. see it, you see it on uh, three point attempts. But Dunklin over two from the free throw line, and both of them are bad misses. And that results in a jump ball going to the Tories. Ooh, nice fake right there. Coach Tomey's livid on the sideline there. The referee missed a, missed a call, and then they called the foul on the shot, and that's going to send La Jolla Country Day to the free throw line. Demon Ori at the line, and he knocks down the first one. This big Z is what they call him. 6'7", Junior, and he is every bit of Big Z as he yeah, Big Z knocks down both free throws and doesn't hesitate in between free throws. Gets the ball and just puts it up and knocks it down. The lead down the two with 2.02 left in the half. You said it early. This one may come down uh, to the final possession the way this is uh, shaping up. Yeah, both teams know each other really well. And championship game, like I said, you leave everything out on the court right here. Um, they look like they're really evenly matched. Dunklin throws the ball away, and the Tories pushing, looking to tire, take the lead with this three from Burmeister. Got the roll, and they take the lead. Wow, nice job by Burmeister right there from the wing, open three-point shot, and got the home love roll. And the, like he was back in La Jolla Country Day. The Tory fans are getting loud. I hit every part of the rim before going in. Nice shot by Burmeister and a little bit of luck right there. Bryce Fitzner. Over to Evan Fitzner. Now Dunklin double teamed. Dunklin driving baseline, throws it out. Wide open shot attempt for three. No good. Dunklin tries to get the rebound, gets the rebound, but there is a foul on Burmeister. Uh, and Burmeister's a little fired up right there. Dunklin tried to get the tip in, reverse behind the be, uh, reverse tip in, it looked like, as he was coming from the baseline to get that rebound and tried to throw it in. And Burmeister got him low, took his legs out, and it, and so D Dunklin will head back to the line where he's 0 at 2, and both misses not close. Yeah, <laughs> so for a great he, shooter, yeah. for a great shooter, he struggles from the free throw line this morning so far. But minute eight, we got a one point game right here to go in the second first half. Free throw is up, and Dunklin knocks down the front end of the one and one, so he'll get another one here. And that free throw looked a little bit be better. He got a lot more arc on that shot, a lot more rotation on the ball. His first two free throws are a little bit more flatter, uh, bending his legs a little bit more, and again, nice rotation, and the ball knocks them both down. So Parker reclaims the lead. 21 to 20 with 108 left in the half. At least it should be 21 20. The scorer's table is working on that now. The official is over there. It should be 21 20. The score table scoreboard now shows 20 to 20. And so they're gonna get this situated. Yeah, the referees are saying that we put our point on there, and the fans are starting to get a little restless as well. There they go. They got it on there, 21-20, and now the, the Parker fans give them a sarcastic cheer. Ooh, nice job. Dunklin with the steal, has a man ahead, and can't get it over to him, and a foul is going to be whistled. It's going to be on the ground. That's going to send Dunklin. Whoa, they called that on Dunklin. And that's Dunklin's second foul of the game. Yeah, I don't know about that call. Yeah, that was a great defensive play by Dunklin, and it was a loose ball going down the court. Looked like it was incidental contact. Should have been a no call, in my opinion. Uh, but tough break for Dunklin and tough break for Francis Parker right there. 57.4 yeah. seconds to go in the half. The referee was saying that he threw him out of the way, but both players were going after the loose ball there. and. Sometimes you got to let your guys play. And now we have a timeout called by Country Day. So we have a good one shaping up here. Parker up by one, 21-20, 51.5 remaining in the first half. You can watch highlights or replay of today's game in our on-demand section. You can also buy a DVD or Blu-ray of today's game right on CIFSanDiego.tv. Click on buy a DVD and you can order today's game right now. Have a game that lasts a lifetime. Brought to you by CIFSanDiego.tv. Looking for a great place to advertise your business while reaching the greater high school community? Then you want to advertise on CAFSanDiego.tv. We have great rates for your business while giving you the opportunity to get your message out to a very important demographic. 
For more information, give us a call at 619-677-3246. 21-20 is the score, 51.5 left in the half. Right now, Tommy's trying to get an explanation on that last call there, which rightfully deserves. Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, it was a little strange play, you know, and in a championship game, that's a tough call right there, especially to have your best player take that foul. On, on and pick up, you know, a second foul, which is limited. That kind of changes the way you have to play because now yeah. you have to be careful picking up that third. You know, if you're, if you're Coach Tommy, Tommy, you might even consider taking dunk one out for the remaining 51 seconds right here and just to save him or, or make sure he yeah, it wouldn't be a bad, doesn't play too aggressive Yeah, it wouldn't be a bad thought. You don't want to lose him to foul trouble. and You know, you like to have him as in there to shooter because you're going to get one more possession here, but you just want to make, play smart defense and not foul. Bamford fires. Shot won't go. Loose ball is controlled by Parker. And now there is about a four-second differential between the shot and game clock. And Parker has the ball. Coleman well, hey, Baker. Go ahead. Uh, well, all right, Country Day. I was just sorry, sorry, <laughs> sitting there, sitting, in, settling in their yeah. man defense again. Sorry. No, you're fine. Baker drives baseline out to Fitzner for three. Got it. Nothing but net. That's Bryce Fitzner. That's his first bucket of the game, and that came at a big time. So the six seconds left in yeah. the half. Fitzner brothers are just draining from three point land today. And the ball is stolen away from Connor Polk. Fires at the buzzer, no oh, good. Oh, almost made it, hit the outside. They're gonna, so that will do it for the first half. Parker on top by four and what's shaping up to be a great one here at Jenny Craig. Parker on top of Country Day 24-20 on CIFSanDiego.tv. We'll be back with the second half in just a bit. Stay tuned. 316 left to go in this ball game. High formation, third and three from the 45 of the Wolverines. And this time, holy cow! Dion almost hands it to the Westview player. He's going to run us to the 5 10. Touchdown, Wolverines. How did that happen? Jason that was Snyder. Holy cow. He was in the backfield before the running back could even get the handoff. He took the handoff from he Dion. He took the ball right out of Dion's hands and just. <laughs> Holy cow. Can't say I've seen that one very often. Snyder comes shooting in from the A gap. I think Dion froze when he saw him. He's ready to hand off to his running back. He froze when he saw him and just hand, let him have the ball. 12 seconds to go. Oh, you could hear a pin drop. Five, four, three, two. Get the snap off. Last play of the game. Brewster rolls right, gets away from two sacks. Dons win, sack at the 20-yard line. What a game. And number 40. Lucas Zinder with the game-saving sack. And there is heartbreak on one sideline and a jubilation on another. Offset eye for the Grizzlies as Keeney takes it under center. They'll send a man in motion. Pitch back to Bird on the sweep. Bird finds a seam. He might go, folks. 20, 15, 10. Drags a tackler. Touchdown! Bird goes 38 yards for the touchdown on the sweep. One more snap is all it's going to take, and there you have it, folks. Your 2011 Division I Sack Joaquin section champions, the Granite Bay Grizzlies, as they defeat Pleasant Grove 30-24. to Jacqueline Williamson. Her serve is over. Dug by Holt. Giblin going back to Holt near side, cut shot, kept alive, back in one by Cathedral, and this one is out as Caston on Hill sends it wide, and the Cathedral Dons have won the title 16-14 in game five. Thomas with the ball, swings it out to Norris. Cameron Taylor tried to block that one away. Norris with a strong take, blocked by B.J. Anya. Huge block, Robinson leading the break the other way. Gets it to Grant, oh. slam dunk Jeremy Grant off the feed from James Robinson. What a play by the stack. Hancock to his immediate left. Two receivers far side, one near side. Hancock on a counter, right side. He's inside the 10, he bounces off a tackler at the 10, the five, touchdown Helix. And behind Hancock, the field is littered with white jerseys on the turf. Wow. 
Hancock not to be outdone by his fellow uh, <laughs> playmakers on offense. Put on a show on that short 12-yard touchdown run. Looked like he was down after three yards, just threw a defender on the ground. As sophomore Chris Carter steps under center in their tight wing formation, Lycos in motion. Second back through is Freeman. Freeman just knocking people over. Look at him run, breaks through, four tackles, and now it's just a foot race to the end zone, and Freeman's going to go the distance. Touchdown, Imperial, on the first play of the second half. Second and six for Imperial from their own 47. They're going to give it to Freeman again off the right, left side. And Freeman gets by one wave and down across the 20, 40-yard line. Still on his feet. Look at him run down to the 20-yard line. One man to beat. Gets by him. Touchdown, Freeman. How did he do that? Holy cow. 64-yard touchdown run. His fifth of the game. Royce Freeman, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to see the top rushing and the <laughs> as I look over to our partners at KXO Radio, the top rusher wow. in the San Diego section for the next two years. That's just amazing. That is just amazing. They hit him in the backfield. They hit him at the line of scrimmage. They hit him a couple yards downfield. They hit him again near no the goal line. No five second count can be started. Nobody was close enough defensively. Lyle's going to swing left side. Robinson. Here is a backdoor lob. There for Grant. They've been wanting that all game. And they got it. 50-42. They lulled you to sleep. And then they hit Grant on the back door. They trail by two. McMorrow's kick is on the way. And it is good. good. St. Augustine has their first lead of the game. 21 to 20 with 25 seconds to play the senior McMorrow with a huge kick not the longest of his career but the biggest of his career oh, St. Augustine leads it 21 to already 20. lining up they won't even have to run that one more play they just act yeah, yes why bother so there you have it your five-time defending division three champions the Cathedral Catholic Dons Running up over and through Olympian 41 to nothing here from Qualcomm Stadium. Patriots down 21 17. Great ball game here. Dylan taking it, looking right, throwing it up top to Gaines. It will be caught by Gaines. Oh my goodness. It looked like the defender had it, but Gaines stole it away from him. Jason Gaines, are you kidding me, my friend? Oh boy. It looked like for sure we had an interception by the Tories, but as they both were going to the ground, Jason Gaines just wrestled it away from him. Shane Dillon to Jason Gaines on an 11-yard play. Fanchin in the game, now out, replaced by Hayashi, the libero for defense. Wenzel serve, championship point, ball up in the air. Hayashi's going to bring it back. Richards, deep one over and three. Free opportunity. Look for Wallace. No, they go Becker. Hayashi then tap over in two by Hollingsworth. Now look for Wallace for the match. <laughs> Kathleen Wallace. No better way for the Bulls to finish it than giving it to their senior leader. 25-12, 25-15, and with eight straight points to close out their third straight D5 championship on a kill by Kathleen Wallace, 25-21 in game three. Branson has won the D5 title. To the backfield, it's Hernandez and Northcutt. Set to throw is Thomas, has time, goes for the home run. It's intercepted in the end zone. Seemed like it, they tried to go to Martin, and Martin slipped. Stockton, Hillmore, and Escalon. That's going to do it, folks. Victory formation, take a kneel. The clock comes out. The clock will tick down. The players jumping up at midfield. I think I see a, a Gatorade. Did, did we have a Gatorade shower? Uh, we most certainly did. Casey Taylor getting the shower there. Very much deserved. Down to 12. Great tackle there by Ronald Williams there to make the stop for Helix. And the Helix fans are starting to celebrate here. This is going to be the final play. Five seconds. Pow Pow will hand it off. And they're going to get in the end zone touchdown. That's Keegan who gets in, but that's going to be the end of the ball game. 44 
to six will be the score. So Oceanside scores on the final play of the ball game. And gets a consolation prize just to, to make this is kind of say that, hey, we didn't get shut out. So 44 to six is your score. And Helix is celebrating on the sideline. Oceanside streak of seven straight championship games has been ended. Two minutes and five seconds left on the clock. Clock rolling, third down and 15 for the Patriots. Dylan, he's got time, steps up. He's going to chuck it deep. He's got a man open. Seth Collins with a diving catch. He hauls it in at the 25. Oh, my goodness. I'll tell you right there. Dylan goes to show why he is a Division I prospect as he's able to step up, elude the pressure, see Collins down the field, and make the connection. As I'll tell you right now, there has not been a bigger catch for Seth Collins this entire season. Fans nervously wait on the far side. Trips right. Vernon, the lone receiver to the left. Troy Zine rolls right. Here we go. And he's going to be... Oh, he gets away, but can't get away from the second slew. Vacaville takes over on downs, and the crowd erupts. So does the sideline. Got to watch it. Got to watch the sideline yeah, here. Yeah, they Remember, really they were up, up 35-26. Two unanswered touchdowns. That's going to do it, folks. Your 2011 Division II SAC Joaquin section champions, the Vacaville Bulldogs, they win 39-35 in a third and four from the. Welcome back to CIF San Diego TV here at Jenny Creek Pavilion, just a few moments away from the start of the second half, which is shaping up to be a great second half with Parker on top of La Jolla Country Day, 24 to 20. And it was a very entertaining first half of game, uh, a half of runs as both teams kind of made a push at different times. Yeah, and defense is key here, as we talked about in the pregame show. Uh, Got to play under control, um, keep your emotions in check. But uh, an impressive dunk by Delonte Dunklin, uh, who everybody in this J Jenny Craig Pavilion has been talking about this during this halftime. A monster tomahawk jam off over two defenders for Hoy Country Day. Uh, just an impressive player for Francis Parker. And then... Uh, um, Sage Burmeister is, is trying to get his groove, gotten a little more groove in the second period. The first period was a little rough for him, but uh, I look for him to come out and have a good second half right here and uh, try to lead this La Jolla Country Day team to a, uh, a victory down four points to Parker right now to start the second half. And we're underway. Coleman Baker has the basketball for the Lancers straight away. Gets it down low to Dunklin. Dunklin lays it up halfway in but falls out, gets his own rebound. And that shot won't go. Now a fight for the loose ball. And Burmeister comes up with it for the Tories. Burmeister. That's a great effort by Frank uh, Delonte Dunklin, even though he didn't finish it off. Got his own rebound, diving all over the court, trying to make a defensive play. And High Frank, energy. Frank Bamford knocks down the, the layup to pull within two. Bamford is the leading scorer for La Jolla Country Day. He has nine for the game. Three-point shot is up. That one won't go. Tipped around, and the rebound comes down to Parker. Dunklin drives baseline, floats it up, gets his own rebound again, and again puts it up, no good, and it's tipped out of bounds. It will go out of bounds to Country Day. Yeah, a little bit of a selfish play right there, yeah. but Delonte Dunklin right there after he got his own rebound. He needed to kick that back out, reset the offense, and try to get a good shot, and that was just really not a great shot down there. They had La Jolla Country Day players, defenders all around him, and one-handed floater out of bounds in the turnover. Bamford. Nice ball movement yeah. by La Jolla Country. Shot is up and no good. Rebound comes down to Bryce Fitzner. When La Jolla Country Day moves the ball around like they did in that last possession, they can get some open shots and open looks. They just got to knock them down. Exactly, and every time they, we see him move the ball around, it's leading to open shots, and Bamford is usually the, the catalyst of that. I mean, besides Dunklin on, on Parker, they got the speed advantage. Um, Height advantage definitely goes to, to Parker, but the speed advantage overall looks like La Jolla Country Day's got a little bit of a quicker squad when they go small. All tied up as Jonathan Brewster gets the offensive rebound and puts it up and in as we have 6.15 left here in the third, tied at 24. Three-point shot attempt for Parker. It's an air ball, and the rebound comes down to Country Day. They're going to push Brumeister, Burmeister. Sometimes when you're too wide open, exact, it's tougher to shoot. Bamford drills a three. Second three of the game for him. And he is leading all scorers right now with 
11 points, or 12 points I should say, and timeout called by Parker as their lead has evaporated quick. 27-24, Country Day leads here in the third with 5.49 left in this championship game for Division Four. You can watch highlights or a replay of today's game in our on-demand section. You can also buy a DVD or Blu-ray of today's game right on our CIFSanDiego.tv. Click on Buy a DVD and you can order today's game right now. Have a game that lasts a lifetime. Brought to you by CIFSanDiego.tv. Looking for a great place to advertise your business while reaching the greater high school community? I know I am. Then you want to advertise on CIFSanDiego.tv. We have great rates for your business while giving you you have the opportunity to get your message out to a very important demographic. For more information, give us a call at 619-677-3246. Want to have your game broadcast live on the internet and be able to watch it again and again on demand while making money for your sports, sports program? Want to give your students the opportunity to create their own broadcast for your school's athletic events? Then contact us at info, that's I-N-F-O, at kbcsports.com. We offer season packages for schools, a full curriculum for your students, and an opportunity to raise up to $10,000 for your sports program. Again, that's info, I-N-F-O, at kbcsports.com, or call us at 619-677-3246. So just a few moments ago, Parker had the lead, and now all of a sudden they're trailing by three. So it is definitely the Tories that came out of halftime with the extra energy in this uh, third quarter. Yeah, and a good good timeout right there by Jim Tomey to try and settle his team, his team down and regroup the troops, get their defense set. Um, Get a set play out of this off uh, out of this possession right here, and try to get some points on the board and get the momentum switched back in their favor for the second half. Open look, three point shot is up and good, as Evan Fitzner hits his four three. And what a play coming out of a timeout! Yeah, and it's exactly why Coach Tommy Tommy called that timeout. It's exactly to get that kind of a set play, settle down this crowd, and answer back to La Jolla Country Days storming out of this third quarter. Burmeister drives in the paint, puts up a tough flipper. <laughs> Shot won't go, flip that up. And Fitzner pulls down the rebound for If you're Coach Meyer, you like that aggressiveness by Burmeister, but not really the best of shots that you would like to say. Again, Burmeister on the lead run, nice move, lay in, dunk, lay in right there. Nice job by the youngster right there to control himself up in the air, let the defender pass him and lay it in for two. 29-27, Country Day on top by two after that turnover from Dunklin, and Country Day is able to capitalize on it. Fitzner. Tough shot, won't go from Bryce Fitzner, and the rebound comes down to the Tories. And it looks like Parker's just trying to force it a little bit too much right here. Instead of just settling down and taking what the defense gives them, they're trying to force their shots. Three-point shot is up and good from Brewster. And that's his first field goal of the game, and that's a big one. It extends Country Day's lead up to 5, 32-27. Biggest lead they've had here this afternoon. Yeah, huge shot by Brewster and really energized that bench for La Jolla Country Day. Dunklin. Parker really just needs to get a bucket right here. Anything, get to the line, just settle this team down a little bit and get something positive going. That's the third turnover in a row right now. Burmeister, a wide open look from the wing, got it. And the tides have turned here in the third. The momentum is with the Tories. They are up by 8, 35, 27, 345 left here in the third quarter. And that was just bad defense by Parker not getting back and letting Burmeister get a wide open three, and he can knock that down nine out of ten times. From Dunklin the wing. can't get the shot to go, gets his own rebound, goes back up with it, and that one's well off the mark. Bamford with the rebound. And again, it looks like Parker's just pressing a little bit too much. They're taking ill-advised shots right now. And he, Delonte Dunklin got his own rebound, but again went back up with three guys in his face and an off-balance shot didn't even hit the rim. This third quarter has been all La Jolla Country Day. Bamford has the ball over to Burmeister now behind the wing. A little reset, giving it back over to Kai Tuitz. Parker comes out the... Defense, a little screen right there, and Burmeister slips down and can't get the shot to go. A nice strong rebound pulled down by Evan Fitzner. Dunklin driving in, finds a man, wide open three, won't go as Connor Polk couldn't get it. Now another three attempt from Baker, and that one won't go. So Fitzner is really the only one that is having success shooting. Yeah, right now Parker can't find the bottom of the net. They can't even find the rim. 
four possessions in a row that had just been horrible and it has given La Jolla Country Day the opportunity to put a, some margin in between them and another three ball. And Brewster hits another three and Country Day has opened up a double digit lead, 38-27, 2.13 left. The threes are falling for the Tories and Coach Tomey wants to talk about it. Timeout on the court. With 2.10 left here in the third, Country Day up by 11, 38-27. KBCSports.com and the Play On Sports Network showcases great high school games every week, and now you can access our content using multiple platforms. Follow us on Facebook at the latest KBC and Play On News on Twitter, or catch our highlights in high definition on YouTube. All of our content can now link to your favorite social media site. Share all the high school action you see every week. Brought to you by your home for high school sports, KBCSports.com and Play On Sports. Need a highlight video for your athlete working during that four-year scholarship? Then you want to contact kbcsports.com. We can provide recruiting video for any athlete in any sport. Not only that, but we give you your own recruiting page right on our website. No more mailing DVDs to colleges. Instead, email coaches link to your personal page. For more information, including pricing, contact us at recruits at kbcsports.com or call us at 619-677-3246. Catch the best of San Diego section basketball on CIFSanDiego.tv. You can watch a replay of today's games after each one concludes. Plus, check out game highlights, player of the game interviews, and more. Or order a DVD or Blu-ray disc of the game. We're at your home for basketball on San Diego, CIFSanDiego.tv. So we see we have seen a extremely hot country day team come out here in the third quarter that are just hitting at all cylinders right now. Yeah, you hit you got that right, Andrew. And uh Another timeout by Coach Tomey right here, and he's second one of this period right here just to settle down the troops, try to get something positive going, a good set, a good play, get an easy basket, maybe string a couple of together and maybe get this back down to a five-point game going into the fourth quarter with 2-10 to go in the third period. Um, definitely lost all the momentum they had going into halftime right now. And they seem to calm down, still in striking distance. This is still a game. No need to panic, plenty of time left. But you got to get a good possession and a good up, good shot selection right here on this possession. And Dunklin has it on the left wing, spins around, throws it to Jenkins on the corner. Jenkins picks up. Back to Dunklin. Dunklin thought about the three, fires it to the left side. Three point shot attempt up, and another air ball from Coleman Baker. And look, Hori Country Days is doing an excellent job on closing out on the shooters. Their defense is on point this second half right now, and every shot is contested, regardless of how open the guy is. He closed out in seconds. That corner shot, he was wide open, and then by the time he shot it, there was no room to operate. Burmeister is fouled hard, but he'll be all right. He's getting up, and he'll head to the line to shoot two. You know, and that defense, that all comes from effort right there. And talking to Coach Meyer in the beginning of the game, that's what he said his boys need to do is be defensive disciplined, and that's exactly what they're showing here in the second half. Looks like he had a great halftime speech, tweaks a little couple things, and he's found something right here in the second half. And Burmeister's first free throw rims out. You know, they were worried about Dunk Dunkling coming into the game. Uh, La Jolla Country Day, but they've done an, a fantastic job overall outside of that one dunk and a couple of fadeaway shots he's made um, controlling him and keeping him in check throughout this game so far. As Burmeister misses two free throws. And Parker will try to bring this back down to a single digit deficit. Tough pass and is picked off by Country Day. Again, another great defensive set by La Jolla Country Day, flustering Parker, um, and forcing them into an unforced error and, a, and another turnover. A minute five left here in the third quarter. 38-27 Country Day, and three-point shot, no good, but Bamford with an offensive rebound, and they'll reset it out to Burmeister. And those offensive rebounds just kill you as a defender having to guard for another 35-second shot clock, almost a minute continuously on defense. Kai Tuitz over to Burmeister. Crosses over, gets in the paint, puts up a tough shot, got it to go. Nice move. And the lead up to 13. With 28 seconds left, and there's about a five second differential on the shot and game clock. Nice pass down low. 
crowd starting to get a little let's go Parker chant going. Dunklin can't hit the little runner. Ten seconds remaining. And Burmeister now can hold for a final shot here in the third. Burmeister crosses over. Fade away from the free throw line. Got it to go. Gets the roll at the buzzer. Great individual effort. Isolation play. Took his man off the dribble. Fade away. Jumper hit every part of the rim and in. Right before the buzzer sounded. Big time shot by the youngster. 42 to 27 is the score with Country Day up big after three over Francis Parker. What a third quarter it was. Today's game is brought to you by Susan Cooper Photography, the official photographer for the CAF San Diego section. Susan Cooper Photography provides quality team and action photos. Can also provide trophies and fundraising options all in one great package. So have them come out to your event. Contact Susan Cooper Photography at 619-501-7128 or visit them online at susancooperphotography.com. KBCSports.com will be providing live audio coverage for the state regional basketball championships as well as the finals. March Madness comes to the high school basketball in California on March 17th for the regional basketball championships. Four venues of coverage around the state. Then the following weekend, March 23rd and 24th, it's the California State Basketball Championships. You can catch it all right here on KBCSports.com, your home for high school sports. Stay tuned, folks, for the San Diego CIF, San Diego TV sport post-game show where we will select our player of the game as well as a wrap-up with action from all of today's ball game. That's coming up following the game of CIF on CIF San Diego TV. Alright Andrew we got one quarter to go right here. Park Eight minutes for all the marbles. Yep. Parker was up by four to start that third quarter. They now trail by 15. Big time yeah. third quarter and they made some great Rick Coach Meyer for Hawaii Country Day made some great halftime adjustments. Came out here and has taken it to Francis Parker so far. Country Day hit four threes in that quarter to help uh, propel that lead. They start the quarter with the basketball. Burmeister over to Tuit. Or excuse me, that's Brewster. Bamford backs in. And he's going to call for a carry, giving it back to Francis Parker. Yeah, and Francis Parker right here has got to get some points off these possessions right now. They can't go two or three or four turnovers in a row. There's only seven minutes to go in this ball game right here. Um, and uh, La Jolla Country Day is playing a tough style defense. And you call a turnover right when you were saying they can't turn it over. And Country Day pushing the ball forward. That's two its. And I think Parker's just feeling the pressure now as this time slips away and this lead gets a little bit bigger and bigger. Uh, there's trying to force the issue, and that's why you're seeing a little bit some sloppy And remember, play. this is a very young team, besides Dunklin, who's the only senior that you know gets regular minutes on this team. Everybody else is underclassmen. A tough shot. Everything's working for La Jolla Country Day today, and a great shot by Bainford. Average 11.4, the senior. Nice job down low on the work in the low post, turn around one-hander. Three-point shot off the mark. Rebound by Dunklin. 44-27, 6.45 left here in the third quarter. Or, excuse me, the fourth quarter. And Dunklin drives in, has the ball stolen away by Burmeister. Burmeister gets it back. Now I wouldn't be surprised if I see La Jolla Country Day uh -huh. taking it down all the way to the shot clock last five, six seconds before they take a shot off try to use the clock to their advantage, up 17 <laughs> with 6.21 to but go. But you were saying that about their girls' team in the previous game, and they, yeah. <laughs> they put the pedal to the metal to the final second, and they were up by you 30 know, points. And that's, that's what I'm saying. It looks like they had something to prove. They wanted to come out there and put a hurting on them. And looks yeah. like they pumped up the La Jolla Country Day boys' team because they just can't miss right now from three-point land. Brewster, his third three here in the second half, and the lead is up to 20. Three-point shot is up from Fitzner. That won't go. And Country Day has the basketball. They have the lead with only four, 548 left in the ballgame. What a tale of two halves. Yeah, definitely. As the La Jolla Country Day just holds on and plays smart basketball for the next five minutes, they're going to have their championship in hand. And the whole Country Day's women and men's team are going to be champions in back-to-back -back games. Great morning for the La Jolla Country Day program. Burmeister has room to drive, lays it up, misses. Tried to go up for the uh, dunk and got blocked. Dunklin crosses over, gets in the paint, is hit hard. And he is fouled shooting two. 
Well, Dunklin will shoot two shots and try to chip away at this 20-point deficit. Yeah, Dunklin just trying to make anything happen, taking the ball to the rack, went up and got taken down by two guys and hit the heart, court pretty hard. It looks like he's okay at the free throw line, try to knock down two. Dunklin misses the free throw. He is scoreless here in the second half. You know, it's funny, when you think back at it, the momentum really changed after his dunk. Because right. they were up by about 10 points at that point, and from then, it just turned on for Parker. They were trailing at the half, but from that point on, it just seems Parker really hasn't had control since that dunk. Yeah, like kind of a little fire in yeah. La Jolla Country Day, and they came home and hit, hit that three to answer, and ever since then, yep. they haven't looked mm -hmm. back. You're right, Ant. Bamford has it just in front of the three-point line. Now they're running a little bit of clock. Under five to go, 4.55. 20-point lead as Dunklin missed two free throws on the other end. Brewster drives in and gets it to go. He's had a huge second half with 11 points. He's uh, making his bid voice for note bid for player of the game. He had yeah. those three threes to kind of start that huge opening uh, third quarter. And then now a tough layup there. Yeah, Burmeister might be working on a double-double right now too. Don't have the rebound count right now, but he's definitely over 10 points. Um, and he's been active on both sides of the glass, offense and defensive glass. And I wouldn't be surprised to start seeing if uh, Parker starts to foul. Um, Another three, fired up by Country Day. This one won't go, and the rebound comes to Dunklin. Dunklin thought about the three. He gets it back. Now he will fire the three. It's going to be well short. Back out. Long jump shot is good. Three-point shot is nailed by Coleman Baker, and Parker will call a timeout. That's only the sixth point in the second half for Parker. Great defensive effort. You know, this has been a, you know, he talked about, Coach Meyer talked about, you know, defense and, and coming out and, and playing disciplined defense, and this is exactly what he wanted to see throughout the entire game, and, and to have six points in the second half, I mean, that is suffocating discipline defense right there, and they're just all over this little Parker team right now. The Parker has about four minutes left to make a push. Down 19, it's gonna be tough, 353, but, you know, crazier things have happened. Yeah, they seem to get a couple turnovers, hit a couple threes, get a couple more turnovers, hit a couple threes, hit a couple more turnovers, a couple threes, and we'll have ourselves a ball game again. Yeah, 19 point deficit right now, 3.53 to go. This is gonna be pretty difficult for the Parker team to, to overcome right now, looking at the way the Hoya Country Day has been playing defense. Um, Coach Meyer has gotta be happy about his team's effort right now, and, and they're smart. So they've been playing real intel intelligent basketball, um, and then on offense, unlike the one we saw in the beginning of this morning's game, running the shot clock all the way down and using the clock as their friend, because that's their best ally right now. Uh, unfortunately for Parker, the clock is their, their worst ally. Or they're fighting the clock, I should say. 49 to 30. And Parker trying to come up with a steal on the defensive end and see if they can't chip away here. We have it approaching the final few minutes of this game. it to Burmeister. Burmeister being guarded by Dunklin, drives right past him, puts up a tough layup, won't go, and the rebound is controlled by Bryce Fitzner. Dunklin quickly pushing on the other end out the Jenkins. Three-point shot attempt now from Fitzner, won't go. Fight for the rebound, it's a jump ball, and the arrow is pointing towards Parker. And yeah, that's a nice job by uh, Dunklin coming in, flying in for the rebound, and, and going up with the La Jolla Country Day player to come down and a jump ball and the possession arrow going to Parker. Great individual effort right there. Three twenty-three left, 49-30, ball is knocked away. Fitzner comes up with it, but a foul is going to be called against Country Day on Burmeister. Fourth foul on Burmeister. Boy, a Country Day fans don't like it. I'm sure you can hear the boos. Yeah, they'll have something to cheer about here in three minutes and 18 seconds, so. Uh, Dunklin 
gets it over to the right side and out of Fitzner. His mid-range shot is short, and that's, you know, it's been good defense for Country Day, but also the shots just haven't been falling for Parker. They've had yeah. some looks, and they're just ice cold in this you're, half. You're right, Andrew. Yeah, they can't hit, they can't hit, hit water if they yeah. fell out of a boat. <laughs> and the defense obviously has been great for Country Day as well, so that hasn't helped, but when you have the looks, you got to knock them down, and they haven't been able to do that. Bamford has the ball. He's had himself a monster ball game. He would uh, be in the running for player of the game as well. Leading scorer. Tuitz gets in the line, in the lane, floats it up and in. And on the other end, Country Day just can't miss. Yeah, that's just a nice little isolation play right there. Spread the defense out and take it in the lane, a little one-handed floater. Um, nothing but the bottom of the net. And a great job by the youngster. And uh, La Jolla Country Day just keeps adding on. Nice cut. Fitzner loses control of it momentarily, and he gets it out to Evan, Bryce Fitzner, and he'll lay it up and in, and we have a timeout with 2.11 left here in the fourth. 51-32, 19-point lead for the Tories. Looking for a great place to advertise your business while reaching the greater high school community? Then you want to advertise on CFSanDiego.tv. We have great rates for your business while giving you the opportunity to get your message out to a very important demographic. For more information, give us a call at 619 Six seven seven three two four six. Stay tuned for the CIF San Diego TV post game show, where we will select our player of the game as well as a wrap up of all the action from this ball game. That's coming up following the game on CIF San Diego TV. Two eleven left. Country Day on top. They are just a few minutes away from winning the school's uh, Division Four boys title, as the girls won it in the previous game. And they will take the rubber match of the series. Both teams went in one and one earlier in the year. Um, the championship game being the third game of this season. And it looks like La Jolla Country Day is going to come away with the victory with 2.05 to go. Foul called on Khalil Jenkins. Might see if a couple substitutions right now to get some other guys in the game. La Jolla Country Day get a little PT in the championship. Ball is inbounded. Bamford loses it momentarily. Ball is knocked out of bounds and it goes to Parker. For two minutes exactly left on the clock. And coming up after this one, we'll have the girls division three championship game between Mount Miguel and Mission Bay, which is uh, promising to be a good game as well. Nice drive and finish by Dunklin. Back to 19 point lead. Foul down low on One thirty-eight left, 51-34, and Bamford will head to the line to shoot two. Free throw is up and rims out. Well, my vote for player of the game is going to Jonathan Brewster. He has 11 points, all of them coming here in the second half. I think that's a pretty safe call right there. And he hits those threes that kind of started this onslaught in the second half that kind of you know got the momentum, momentum going. Dunklin in the lane. Tough shot, misses everything. Loose ball comes out to Burmeister, and we have a foul called on Dunklin with 127 left. <laughs> Dunklin with four fouls. And we have a foul sending Brewster to the line. He'll try to add to his point total. I think you're going to see a lot of that now with one minute and 24 seconds to go in the game. Uh, just try to get them to the line. Hopefully they miss their free throws and uh, give Parker a chance to come down and put some points on him, as you'll see another foul right there. No, oh, they weren't in the penalty yet, so I apologize for saying Brewster's going to the free throw line for the penalty. Not yet. One more team foul to be committed before free throws are uh, given. And 
and Tuitz is going to be fouled, and he'll head to the line for one and one. 17 point deficit with 121 left. Two hits at the line. Four points on the evening, but does a good job doing kind of the dirty work that doesn't really get uh, put on the box score. Misses the front end. Fitzner with the rebounds. Dunklin fires a three. Dunklin can't get it off the back of the rim. Offensive rebound. Dunklin gets it back. Drives in. He is fouled. He'll head to the line to shoot two. <clears throat> yeah, and Dunklin had a wide open player on the wing right there on the corner. He could have passed the two for a wide open three, but instead took the shot himself. But he'll go to the line now and uh, try to add to his Parker score. And nice round of applause for Burmeister. Uh, Burmeister Bur fouls Burmeister, out. Yeah, he fouls out. That's okay with a minute 10 to go and almost a 20 point lead, eight, 17 point lead. Burmeister can enjoy the round of applause and go take a seat on the bench and get ready for his uh, ring ceremony. Kai Kabilis will check in uh, to replace him. Dunklin knocks down the free throw. Dunklin, second one is up and good. Knocks them both down. Lead down to 15, 110 left. Kabilis is going to get fouled. And he'll head to the line to shoot free throws. One and one. That's what you like to see the, the shooter getting fouled. He sprints yeah. to the line, ready to shoot. He's ready to go. Give me the ball. Yeah, it's kind of, almost kind of a mood point right now to. to foul on every possession, but you know, that's what Parker's been choosing to do, and La Jolla Country Day, all they gotta do is just get to the line and knock down their, their free throws, and all is good in La Jolla Country Day land. And Kabilis has knocks down both free throws. The lead back up to 17, 108 left. Dunklin gets in the paint, layup is blocked. Ooh, nice block Fitzner by with the rebound and puts it up and in. And that was Bamford with the block on Dunklin, great job on defense right there. Well, really, it was the third quarter that was the difference of this game. The fourth quarter has been played to a draw. The third is where that 15-point lead came from, yeah. and that's where we stand right now. Came out on fire, set halftime adjustments, and they worked. Never looked back. Got to give Coach Meyer... And the whole Country Day staff, all the credit in the world right there because we had, I thought this game was going to come down to the last possession of the game. Um, but obviously I was wrong, and the great adjust, halftime adjustments. Um, they came out on fire in that third quarter, like you said, Andrew, and never looked back. Country Day we will try to tack on some more points here at the free throw line, and front end is knocked down by Nick Schlossberg. And second one is good as well. Dunklin drives in, and we whistle for a travel. And I think at this point you've got to maybe call off the dogs and, and stop fouling and, and kind of realize that, uh, you know, this wasn't your day. Although Country Day calls a timeout here with 46 seconds left, up by 17. Agreed. I think there's just a little bit of a uh, history between these two squads, and uh, looks like Coach Tomey doesn't want to give in right now and just keeps extending the game. So 55, 38, 46.6 left. And Country Day is going to sweep the Division Four titles. The girls won it convincingly, and it looks like the boys are going to win it convincingly here as well. Yeah, good day for the Hoy Country Day fans. Lots to cheer about. Got to be happy. Boys and girls will be celebrating tonight. Stay tuned after this one. We'll have the girls Division Three Championship, Mount Miguel and Mission Bay going head to head. Ball is inbounded. 
to which wisely runs back out instead of shooting the layup just to milk more clock. Bamford throws it out. Down to 35 seconds. And it doesn't look like Parker is going to foul anymore. And Brewster gets it up top. Back to Brewster, our player of the game, who has 11 points all here in the second half. And now we have a foul. And Dunklin has fouled out. Hugs and high fives all along the La Jolla Country Day bench. Yeah, they're, they can feel it here. 23 seconds left, and they'll be celebrating as Cabela's has been knocking down free throws left and right here since he's been checked in. And knocks them both down to lead 57-38. Believe it or not, Parker had a four-point lead at halftime. Jenkins drives in and scores it. First points of the game for Quillo Jenkins. Fight for the loose ball. Poland has it. They're two seconds away, one second away, and they have it. Oh, <laughs> and he tries to go for the dunk at the buzzer. Denied by the rim. Great game. So 57 to 40 is your final. La Jolla Country Day defeating Parker in the Boys Division IV Championship game. We're going to try to have our player of the game interview. Stay tuned. We'll try to get Jonathan Brewster up here and uh, chat with him for a bit and talk about his hot shooting performance as Country Day wins Division IV boys here on CIF San Diego TV. Fourth and ten from the 41 yard line for St. Augustine. Kennedy dropping back to pass. Looking left, firing, incomplete okay. intended for Nolan. No penalty flags on the field. Mar Vista will take over on downs. And Jordan Lertique will take that knee. And the Mar Vista Mariners knock off the number two seeded St. Augustine Saints at Mesa College in a dominating performance on both sides of the football for Mar Vista. They trailed 14 to nothing and came back. Again, down 2 nothing, facing adversity. And they've really just turned the table around since game number three. Set an attack, great block made back inside the Maverick zone. A chance there by, uh, by Bosback back inside the Maverick zone. Ball attack there by Bosback. A second opportunity by Bosback. Lift violation, call. Uh, winner, oh. it's the over, the over the net call. Oh my goodness. Bosback reached over on the attack. A Maverick error wraps up the title for the Presentation Panthers. A 15-9 victory in game number five, and they wrap it up coming back from 2-0 down match-wise and take it three games to two. 36-35 and driving, and oh, baby! Shrigley with a jam, and it was with emphasis. And it's the foul, and listen to these fans. <laughs> Do you know who's standing up right behind us? Tony Bland, who is the head recruiter for San Diego State. <laughs> I think he's drooling. Somebody get that man Ooh. a napkin. Quick score on this drive. There goes a the handoff to Zeller, trying to go straight ahead, but he is met by Wall. Now he breaks out to the outside, gets across the 30, 35, on the right, 40, midfield. He's running down the sidelines. He's going to go all the way. And he's at the 10, 5, touchdown! Patrick Zeller got he stood up at the line of scrimmage and broke out to his left to the far sidelines. And he was in a foot race and he went all the way for the touchdown. Broke a tackle and made it nice and showed his speed as he got outside for the touchdown. Back in the backfield to the left is Campbell. Hernandez takes the snap, play action to Campbell. Looks down the field. Now here comes the pressure. He's going to be hit. He breaks the tackle, rolls left. 
Now he's going to cut up field. He's going to break another tackle, and then another tackle down the sideline. Gets a block inside the five. What a touchdown! Hernandez goes 33 yards in spectacular fashion, breaking four tackles along the way, including two in the backfield, and Hilltop has tied this one up at 29. And reasonably so, he's been doing a good job of leading this offense. Looking for his first touchdown pass of the season for Ray Hudson, and Ray Hudson gets both feet inside the end zone. Touchdown Foothill. Like you said earlier, 6-2 body frame, and can probably, in what, you, what we just saw there was getting Randy Moss, was what we call getting Moss. Um, clearly just leaped over the defender there, landed both feet in, feet in bounds. Grant with a big, strong defensive rebound. He brings it back down the floor again in another slam dunk. Jeremy Grant can run the point, and he can fly. Huge dunk, two big dunks in the last minute. Muller trying to close it out. Deep ball, up in the air, cram. Bringing it back, Arbizo. Cram over in three, free opportunity. Look for Rotobaugh, no, pass middle, Weimer! Ball game. 25-19, Foothill wins it, three games to one. Because this kid has definitely proven that he he, um, he can make things happen here in this ballgame. They will go with him, Bula Graft on a stretch run, just breaking tackles. The little man is in the clear to Tory Territory, the 25, the 20. The 10, the 5, touchdown Knights. What a run, the freshman, Bula Graft. Ooh, I tell you what. There were at least three times on that on that run that he should have gone down or he should have been wrapped up. Missed tackles there. Cost, cost La Jolla Country Day as Bula Graft, the freshman running back for Bishops, is able to take it in. And, and that was a determined run there, Andy, by. So first and ten, Brandon Lewis in the shotgun has time to throw, and he will fire, and he has a man diving catch. Did he hold on to it? He did. What a catch from Kendall Keys. And that may be the KBC Sports Player of the Week. <laughs> what a catch by he laid himself wow. out there, and a great throw, as you said. Read, read it nicely, did Lewis, and really caught his receiver on the go and just kind of put it out there right on the outstretch of his fingertips. He laid out and he made it. No he doubt. might be called upon to make a crucial kick. Second down and eight after the two-yard gain on the receiver screen. And Ooh. Paulson fires across the right seat for Jack Finney who makes the catch. Stiffs arms of Fender at the 50 and is finally brought down at the Amador Valley 45-yard line. Flags flying later to go play. for it. Fourth and three. They figure three is easier to get than the field goal at this point. And it's Paulson looking for Finney. Right seam, side, right seam, touchdown. Jack Finney makes the catch. Bounces off a defender. A 23-yard pass and catch from Paulson to Finney. And the Foothill Falcons are back out in front. They certainly are. Finney lining up a tight end. I had a feeling that Paulson was going to look right side there as Chase Miller was lined up. Receive a far side. But instead it was Finney straight to the post. And Paulson picks him out in stride again. The third catch on the drive for Finney. give it to Tyree on an exchange against the zone. Do a little three-man weave. This is Tyrell back with it. Tyrell's going to go lob back door. Tyree Robinson with a flush. Now that was nice. Very nice design play. Uwaba. Uwaba back there. Bogart takes a snap. He's going to run the play. He's going to throw. He's got a man open at the 10. It's under thrown. It's incomplete. No, or is it caught? It is a catch. Wow, juggling catch inside the five-yard line. Maliga, was that Maliga pulling that one in? It is Maliga. Boy, that ball was deflected by, by one of the Falcons. And then Maliga, he lands on the ground and pulls it in. What a catch. Set up with three men in the backfield, back to the wing. This time inside counter Telefaro. No, they're going to throw this one. He's got a man open. And a great, what a great, what a catch! What a grab by tight end Joe Gigantino. He must have bobbled that ball four times in the air, and he was actually tipped by the defender and had the presence of mind to keep his concentration and make the grab. Unbelievable catch. 
and the ball at the 29-yard line of the Eagles, and you can see the defense, they're still bewildered. How did he come up with that Unfazed, grab? Unfazed, even with two defenders around him and four big, that's so unconventional for a guy to handle the ball so well. January oh. with the one-hand jam. He was not going to be denied there coming over with Milmo. Bradshaw Christian is going to bring the starting unit out on the field one more time just to take a knee. Ten seconds left. They better hurry it up. Actually, they're going to try a field goal for Lawson. They're not. They're going to run out of time. Are they going to take? There's a snap. And they aren't even going to get the kickoff. They tried to hustle Lawson out there for a field goal opportunity to see if they could get her one. But it does not matter. They don't get the punt off in time. Drew Rickert just got the Gatorade shower on the sideline. Bradshaw Christian is your winner. 62-6, to the final score. They are your D6 Titleist this year here in 2000. Five seconds left. Clock winding down. Poway has won the title. 56 to nothing over the Vista Panthers. The championship goes to Poway. Well, your double wing T option offense down by five. They're going to have to spread it out. They go with three receivers to the near side. That's the short side. One solo left. Back to throw. McHugh. McHugh under pressure. Rolls out of it. Now he's dumped and dropped. And that's the last thing they could handle. And that's not what they could do. Bellerman now can't stop the clock. Four, three, and that is going to do it. Santa Margarita coming back from the dead has won the Division I State Bowl Championship 42-37 in an improbable comeback against Bellerman of San Jose. And the Bellerman players on the field, on their knees, just absolutely dejected after playing just a... Just a gut-wrenching football game. About how he's going to throw the football on this play. And <laughs> Westlake might have been daring him to do so. Just joking, though, folks. Peros is going to take a knee. He does. That's going to wrap it up. Well, I'll tell you what. Westlake had an outstanding year. They win the Southern Section title. Never easy. They went 14-0 coming in. They're going to finish 14-1. And Welcome back to... San, CIF San Diego TV with us now our player of the game from La Jolla Country Day, Jonathan Brewster. Congratulations on the victory. Thank you. Now you guys won 57-40. You guys were losing by four at the half, and then you came out and just started bombing away, and your whole team was <laughs> bombing away. What was said at halftime to turn the tide like that? Well, <clears throat> we, we thought we played all right defense in the first half, <laughs> and our goal was just to keep getting stops in the second half. And mm -hmm. my, my teammates and my coach, they always tell me never stop shooting. They always mm -hmm. have faith in me, even when I go like 0 for 10. <laughs> so we just came out and played. Now, were you guys, I mean, what was it, though, at, at halftime? I mean, you're trailing before. You guys look like a completely different team. Did, you know, Coach Meyer say something that kind of, like, fire you guys up? To <laughs> well, I mean, like I said, like, play, keep playing, keep mm -hmm. playing the game. But, I mean, it's like the last, you know, the last half. Like it all, the whole season comes down to this, and they're just saying, you know, leave it all out on the floor, and that's what we did. Now you're a senior, you've been work, working for this for so long. I mean, how great is this feeling to, to finally get oh, it? There's no better feeling. <laughs> no better feeling. Now, did you guys know coming into this year that you guys would be as good as that you are right now? I mean, were you guys a little uh, surprised that you've come out this good? I mean, at the beginning of the year, we had really high goals, and our expectations were to win CIF. Um, I mean, we've had a couple stumbles along the way, like in league, but I mean, this this was the ultimate goal all along. So, what's the celebration plans tonight as uh, you have this Division Four title? Uh, I don't know. I just know the whole team's going to be together tonight, so we'll we'll do something. All right, we'll go enjoy the victory, 57-40. Jonathan Brewster, our player of the game here from CIF San Diego TV.